Yeah, Please. you went offline. You went offline. Oh, son of a oh, bitch. We're, More and we're, back, we're back on. Bullet dodged. Woo, close call. Drink for bullet dodged. I thought we, I thought yeah. we were going to have another instance of what happened with Valfaris, but nope. Uh, Doesn't that so, taste purple for a second? <laughs> <laughs> so next, this is a case of Whiskey Tango Foxtrot. Uh -oh. oh, good lord. But then again, this is Spain, and from, from what I've been told, Spanish feminists are fucking crazy. Like, even more so. Oh, than I've never ones. heard of a Spanish feminist, but please enlighten me. The Spanish, so, the, a counselor for, according to a local Spanish publication based in the Canary Islands, Canary 7, Spanish Socialist Workers Party, get the helicopter, counselor, oh, damn it. Puerto del Rosario. In the helicopter you go, you bastards. For Puerto del Rosario Town Hall, Aurelia Vera told her classroom that, quote, boys need to be castrated at birth. What? Oh my fucking Christ. What? You see, folks, um... this is one of this is one of the Wokes End games, kids. I'm gonna go ahead and yell rise. <laughs> you know what? Yeah. Yes, rise. Uh, yeah, I'm like, excuse me. My what? Crazy ass bitches. This is the shit where I. This is where I stay in my corner of, of my of the internet. So, yeah. If there's any solace to this, she had to defend her remarks in front of a tribunal. Ooh, I guess they. Okay, some tell me as as, as batshit as they are, they didn't buy it. Unfortunately, so, the video was in Spanish, so I can't. So I can't comment too much on it. Uh, nah. and as a. Uh, as a as a white boy who loves smoking black and milds and drinking beer, I'm going to let Mildred finish, and then I would humbly request a two minute. I'm going to rip you a fucking new one rant. Oh Go right. crap! Go. Right. Anyway, tell you what, Doku, I'm gonna do you a favor. I'm going to give you an introduction for this because I don't really deserve this for myself, but I think with what you've got to say, you deserve to stand on the soapbox. Yes! Boys, I I I'm stepping away. You may go fire go. when go. Mm -hmm. Oh, so you're not even going to read the article. You're just going to let me... Go ham. Yep. Huh? All right. So, first off and foremost, uh, hey, feminist. When you're talking about you want your equality, you want this, you want that. Well, you know what? You fucking have it already, you fucking idiots. You already fucking have it. You know what fucking men do? You know what the fucking role of men in society is? It's to protect your fucking needy asses so that you can fucking take care of the ch children and raise the next generation. We're the ones that go out and fucking die. We're the ones that go out and fucking hunt for food. You're the ones that sit there and say, my man ain't doing this or my man ain't doing that. You're the ones that are talking about you want equality? Guess what? You're not talking about equality. You're talking about a meritocracy that doesn't fucking exist because the fucking future that you want isn't a fucking meritocracy. It's not based upon merit. It's based upon entitlement and fucking privilege. And you can't fucking realize that because the society that we've given you has given you more privilege than any fucking man in this world has. What you want 
is you want people to take care of you. It's the same fucking shit that pisses us, pisses us off, like actual men. People who are willing to sacrifice themselves, sacrifice their time, sacrifice their lives to actually go out and do something to make sure that our fucking children and our ga grandchildren actually have a life for themselves that isn't a complete fucking hellhole while you sit there and fucking bitch and moan and whine and complain only to fucking blame your husbands or blame your fucking father. That's the fucking shit that you're going on about. And then you get mad when we point it out to you. And you fucking blame us for your problems? You're the ones talking about divorce. You're the ones talking about breaking down the nuclear family. You're the ones talking about, oh no, there's white privilege or male privilege or this or that. Privilege this, privilege that. No, motherfucker. There is no fucking privilege because fucking mother nature doesn't give a flying fuck about what's between your legs. It's because you haven't fucking worked your goddamn ass off to fucking try to provide a better future for your fucking future generations. So don't sit there and fucking point your finger and tell me I haven't fucking worked hard enough. And if you don't like what the fuck I'm saying, I don't fucking care. Because it's the fucking truth. And if you don't like it, I don't fucking care. End of fucking oh, story. A little bit of the bubbly. Damn! Uh, nope. Right, now uh, that we've ripped it, now I that we've ripped I into, a, I thought I had a rant on <laughs> Billy Graham earlier. Damn! You know, now that you we've know ripped what? into, you know what? Well, before we, before we go on, you know what? Um, uh, Doku, where should I send this bitch? Yeah. By the way, motherfucking cheers because that's the one damn thing we have to fucking show for our fucking hard work. <laughs> and if I don't fucking have the chance to have a fucking beer, then it means I'm fucking dead. Take right, good so, care of my children. <laughs> All right, so Doku, where should I send her because of this? Oh, you want to know the reason I love the fucking girl that I'm enamored with and in love Doku. with? It's because Doku. she fucking hates women. She fucking hates feminists and hates women and knows that what I'm saying is fucking truth. And that's the reason I fucking love her. Because she's a real woman, unlike you fucking needy bitches. <laughs> Doku. Doku, man's damn question. Where should I send her? This scumbag. Send her wherever the hell it is you think she deserves to be sent. Okay. Uh, okay, I'll pick. Off to Detroit, you bitch! No! No! Okay, now now that we've nu now that we have now that we have nuked the Spanish Armada. Again, <laughs> <laughs> and the and the and that and that god awful excuse for an armada in that show. That one was for you, Shades. <laughs> it's time to talk about the fact that somehow the phrase "it's okay to be white" still triggers people, including oh, an investigation the at Tennessee University that needed to get the fucking FBI. At this point. I love these flyers. You want to know why I love these flyers as someone who's who's a black man for, for all intents and purposes? I'll tell you why I love these flyers. Because you're they are proving Alexander's razor. Uh, yes. Look, here's the thing. As as a fellow white man, I think I I, I have to say something here. Now do I want, do I like, you know, if it was saying white are, white men are superior, then yes, I'd be right in line with you guys calling this shit out. But the Flyers are simply saying it's okay. Meaning, it can be interpreted as saying, you don't have, you know, people like me are not the enemy. We are not the evil that you have to fight. Many of us, would be will you know if you're fighting for equality, true equality, as Doku pointed out earlier. You know we would be right beside you, but no, you are fighting for superiority. You want to think your particular group, whatever group it may be, is superior to us because you want to show that now you can dominate us like we supposedly dominated you. But that doesn't how it works. It's never how it works. It didn't work for us either. So guess what? Yeah. Knock it the fuck off! 
it gets yeah, that's that's what happens. And you backlash, want you, you want to know what's up, e- backlash happens. You want to know what's even better about this? Because be because uh, because of how, because of how this is because of how this is going. And I do like the joke that Leo's put. Excuse me, it's who <laughs> white or Hunter Whitecrest PSO style. Very nice. Um, you're we're gonna see more of these flyers, and you want oh. and. The people who got offended, you want to know why? You want to know? You want to know who's the cause of seeing all these flyers? Lean in, come on, a little closer. You, you, you dumbass. Yep. Because you, because yep. they've seen how you get so triggered over this, they're gonna, they're gonna keep, they're gonna keep pushing that button. So congratulations. Yes. I want to see. I want. In fact, I want to see. It's okay to be white flyers in every university in the U.S. and Canada. Yeah. You know yeah. what the ultimate goal uh, of a lot of these groups are? Like the the true final goal. They want to have the reverse final solution. They want to see white men labeled as a whole as a terrorist group so that they could put us all away and be done with us. Yep, not working. Yeah, that's not <laughs> they can't, it ain't gonna happen, gonna but that's what they want. They can't yeah. ban it. A- Storm, storm the, the problem, castle. They can't ban us all. The problem is simple. The problem is simple. What they're trying to do, what they are going to do, and this is going to happen, and this is going to happen, and no, and no one's going to like this. What you're going to do is you're going to basic. It's basically confirmation bias amongst amongst the white supremacists. Okay, that's all you're doing. You're giving the KKK more power. You do not want to do that. Well, dude, you know why the reason they're doing it, right? It's not that difficult. It's the typical Hegelian dialectic. Problem, reaction, solution. Mm-hmm. They need the problem so they can fight against it, so they can they can provide a way like, oh, just give just give us a little more power and we'll go yeah. ahead and In we'll fact, take care know, of the problem you know for you. But I um I digress. We need to move on. So then yeah, there was yeah. this thing. This is right up your. This is right in your wheelhouse. Oh yeah! Gamespot oh, decided to get triggered over the over Konosuba Legend of Crimson. Now, I will oh, admit, Jesus, Lord I, in hell. I love Kono, I love Konosuba, even if I, even if Aqua is still useless. <laughs> <laughs> Aqua's always been useless. That's her whole. That's, that's the, the whole only point. reason she exists is because she's useless. Mm-hmm. Aqua That's is shit. useless, and dar- darkness would be useful if it w- if it weren't for the fact that she's darkness. <laughs> I like darkness. Hello, damn it. darkness, my old friend. <laughs> darkness is <laughs> darkness is. <laughs> Fuck your couch. Fuck your couch. <coughs> Fuck your couch. Fuck your couch. Bye, no, you rich motherfucker. <laughs> also, I, gr- I agree with. I agree with Leos. Uh, yeah, no darkness out of the three. Darkness is best girl. Yeah, but they decide now. From what I understand, from what I understand, the film has been getting has been getting very positive reviews, except for Gamespot's review, where they where they claimed that that it's first off they say it stretches out this one storyline by injecting several side stories and how it largely struggles to capture the same tone as the anime series. Because it splits up the core group of characters. And then... But apparently their big prop, Their big problem... Was the character of Sylvia. Who they... Um, who... Why? Actually, if I may... Because Sylvia... Is a kind... Is... Is a... Is a is a chimera, and I will let Shades handle the rest. Yeah. So basically, now I haven't seen this movie myself. In fact, I'm kind of a little behind on Konosuba to be frank, but I know enough about it to know the general gist. So basically, of course, you you see the image of Sylvia on uh, and by all appearances, she looks like a very attractive woman. And of course, Kazuma, being the kind of guy he is. He's got a spit with her. In, at least mm-hmm. until... But then, when she decides to receive, reciprocate that uh, those affections, she gets close, grabs him around, 
And that's when he notices a certain little problem. And I'll let Admiral Akbar tell a tent from there. It's a trap. Ah, uh, yes. Turns out, turns out she's she's got the same the same biological makeup as Lilith Lovett. I think the best <laughs> thing I can say is, oh, X3 notices your bulge. <laughs> and of course, guess. now, now, of course, when you are expecting a beautiful woman and find out that she is not just a woman, you're going to have a reaction to that. And not every guy is going to immediately be tr- going to be like, oh, she's got balls too. Okay. No, you're going to freak the fuck out because you, yeah. what your expectations have been supplanted. Yeah. And they're using that as the reason they don't like this movie. Yeah. Yeah. So basically it's sort of like a fun, a funny version of the crying game. Yeah. <laughs> Quote from the GameSpot article here. It all comes to a head when Cosmo and his party meet Sylvia, the main antagonist of the movie. <laughs> Sylvia takes a liking to Cosma immediately and, in typical villainous fashion, attempts to draw him to her side by promising to treat him with the respect he deserves. Eager to escape his worthless teammates and begin a life of luxury in the most curvaceous character he's ever encountered, Cosma initially accepts the proposal, and Sylvia treats him with the kindness she promised. She accepts him, faults and all. However, Cosmo's tune changes upon learning Sylvia possesses male anatomy. The movie borrows the definition of a chim- <laughs> the movie borrows the definition of a chimera to provide a fantastic explanation. <laughs> okay, turn that Doing down. There. Yeah, turn that down there. You want me to play the music after? No. No, I just turned it down a little bit. It was really loud. Okay, I could barely that even was hear myself. Loud, actually, yeah. Anyway. The movie borrows the definition of a chimera to provide a fantastical explanation for Silva, who is biologically born a man, but identifies as a woman and thus is partway through a sex change. And his party members immediately accept him back, sharing in his repulsion for Sylvia. The whole scene comes off deeply transphobic. And drink. Drink! You were going in this... You were... Writer, you were going in this looking for witches. And I can't help but notice... Nobody else is taking this kind of stance. Nobody else is go is going. Oh, it's ba- oh, it's bad because oh, it's bad beca- be- because because and, and claiming that the humor is harmful. All the only other the only other correction I have to make is calling th- is calling this person the most cur- the most curvaceous they've had to deal with. Um, is any- has did anybody else forget about Eris? <laughs> Whether or not she pads her do chest. Do we do we really have to go? go on and rattle off how many fucking anime have used it female or male but looks like female or lady boys or trans or any of these types of tropes as plot devices in the story do we really need to fucking list all of them off no we don't my, I just, I just, all right, I here we go. My just, fucking case. Here but, we um, go. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I think he's just button left. Cut. Oh, God, yeah. <laughs> Well, I feel dirty. Good night, people. <laughs> Good night, everybody. <laughs> Good night, everybody. I never, I never claimed to have the cleanest <laughs> show. <laughs> no. But then there was oh. this whole thing, and I talked about this with you on Saturday. Oh, please, please let me handle this. Oh, oh boy. I need to cover this. Yep. So, at it. basically, this mother went on the news. Because she was upset with with a certain manga series, one that I have actually reviewed the anime for on my show, Miss Kobayashi's Dragon Maid. Oh God! Oh, <laughs> oh yes! Oh yes! It's a wonderful now, show. Yes, I love it. I gave it my official seal of approval. It is fucking hilarious. It is heartfelt. It is awesome. The characters are amazing. I have nothing bad to say about this show. At all. Cannot wait for may season I, two. But- may I quote, though, to follow that? 
Huh. There's an entire chapter in this book where they talk about the character's breasts. I'm not kidding. That is an actual quote from a woman on a new segment for I cannot remember the exact station, but yeah, deal with that, people. Oh, um, my -E fucking word. Not sure we're... Not sure we're... <laughs> Won't somebody please think of the children? There it is. Actually, <laughs> make that a button. Um, that is a button. That I would, I would argue, I would argue that, I would argue that th that some people need to think about the children a little bit less. Yeah, uh, great. Fuck anyway. the children. This is Mr. Thank Conductor you telling you. I know. I know what I'm talking about. Yeah, thank you. I know what thank I'm you, talking Aaron. about. Thank you, Aaron. Yes, yeah. thank you, Mr. Carlin. But yeah, so yeah, this woman got upset because her her child, her her daughter was reading Miss Kobayashi the manga at her local library and they saw that particular moment and got upset. Most likely, yeah. And, and I'm, okay, first of all, I wouldn't exactly call this a manga meant for middle school children to begin with because there's mm. quite a bit of se quite a few sexual it's jokes risky. in this. It's, yeah. it's also rated teen. It's rated teen, so First of all, you should be monitoring what your kid's reading anyway like a good fucking parent. Speaking as one myself, you dumb, ignorant bitch. All right? Secondly, why are breasts evil to you people? Again. Seriously. I'm They're so sick of, of that. They're scared of fucking breasts. It's like it's that, it's that meme when someone pushes their tits, tits on, onto the freaking uh, side of the car and the guys and that and that dumb bitch that looks like Kamala Harris is terrified. Yeah, I get so sick of that. All right? It is a part of your own fucking body. It is it has a purpose. It is designed this way for a reason and it's not a sexual one. All right? How about Just, that side boob? Yeah. Well, let's let's not right. Where do you where do you think the where do you think the term mammalia comes from? Mm-hmm. Exactly. So I am so sick of that. All right? This is why the whole bre uh, breastfeeding in public argument is such a big fucking deal. Because you people can't see breasts as anything more than sexual deviancy. Well, that just shows what goes on in your own fucking head, not what goes on in someone with the head of common sense. Oh, personally, I was, personally I, was against, I was against the whole in public thing simply, simply as a... Um, Simply for safety reasons. That's yeah, a little more out, of a defensible argument, but check no. out the council because uh, Dev just posted this. Uh, yeah, you know, I'll be honest. I have my own personal gripes against SFO. That's I know you don't like Dev, but still. No, 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 there's a reason. There's actually a reason you don't know about this, Aaron. He used to work for us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know you two had a beef. I, I, I know the, st I know both sides of the story here. Yeah. Okay, fair enough. Fair and Doctor No, we here in the monastery do not acknowledge or respect No Nut November. Oh, we'll be getting to that. We'll get to <laughs> we that. Will, we will be getting to that. But yep. still, I'm sorry, lady. If you, you know, if you can't appreciate a good piece of art like Miss Kobayashi simply because of breasts. Maybe you need to take a look at your own fucking self. Of um, I'm just going to point this out there. Based on her appearance, I get the feeling she hasn't done reduction surgery herself. Just say it. <laughs> just a thought. I mean, I normally, I normally wouldn't, I normally wouldn't strike across the bow like that. But it, but um, rules. But if you're, but if you're going to fire the first shot, I, I have to fire back. Simple rules of engagement. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Moving on from that now. I want to make people you got beef with shades. Ugh. Look, I look. We know about that situation. The moratorium, moratorium. is still in effect. Moratorium that is, not is the effect, point. And, and and I'll be honest. I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and make my piece on this right now. No, I'm not a big fan of this guy. I have my issues with how he's handled things, but this still pisses me off because denying him his speech, not cool. I mean, mm. disagree with. It's as, as our saying goes. Well, sir, you, I may not agree with your opinion. I will defend to the death your right to have it. Thank you, Voltaire. Now, here's mm -hmm. the thing. We, do you remember last week when we covered Unseen Japan? 
Oh, that, that one, idiot! That one dumbass who tried who tried to who got so triggered over the over the uh, advertisement for Red Cross Japan. They yep. They decided to try and get get Yellow Flash's Patreon reported solely for making fun of solely for the fact that they got blown out by by him. Oh boy! You know what? And is Let encouraging my... his and is encouraging people to report his Patreon. Let me get out my violin play for this for this freaking uh this freaking guy Jin in unseen Japan. Oh, you're so oh poor little baby. You got you, want, you got you want some juice box. You got blown up. You got blown out because you because you made it because you made a dumb hot take. Welcome to the internet. Deal with it. Yep. Yeah, this, I mean, I don't like the guy, but yeah. this is not how you handle him. This was over the whole the whole um, Yuna thing that we talked about, the yep. uh, the Yuna and the haunted hot springs issue. Mm, oh God, that oh that's this fucker. Oh yeah, fuck that guy. Oh yeah, that's the it's the, yeah, it's the same person that 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 basically got pissy because you showed a go a ghost titties. Seriously. And we're back to this shit again. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we're back I to the moon again. problem again. Where are her organs? What is back? Hey, shut the I fuck told, up, bitch. I told, I told you if you, if if I the only reason I have the only reason I haven't covered that whole thing is because one, it's kind of a repeat of what happened when he when this happened with Miss Marvel, and two, I need a collection of the of the best um and spiciest hot takes on the matter before, yeah, before like I, I put said. that in the temple. So that's going to that's going to be your homework assignment, Aaron. But then there was this whole thing where a guest and I I love how the guest got blown out got blown out for this. A guest was demanding that clapping be clapping be banned and swapped with jazz hands and got blown the fuck out. Oh, <laughs> what the fuck? On national television. Hey, that good for you? That good for you, bastard? <laughs> Hey, um, do any of you slow clap button? I know, like, the slow golf clap oh, thing. Oh, no, no. Uh, Maddie, oh, I yeah, got you do it. I got you covered. Give it a second. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah, wanting to, <laughs> she was on Good Morning Britain, which gets, which is for, from what I'm told, gets a, gets a heck of a lot of viewers. You'd ima you'd imagine she was on IT ITV One. And, well, it's a and, big fucking channel, big yeah. fucking channel. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Ellen Scott, a journalist and writer, appeared on the show opposite presenters Susanna Reed, Ben Shepard, and Kate Garraway. I have no idea who they are. She says she wants clapping banned because people with anxiety or sensory processing issues. Maybe put off attending events that involve clapping. Theaters should swap clapping for jazz hands to be more inclusive to those with anxiety. And she says people who who are sensitive to loud noises could also be impacted. Viewers are quick to oh, huge. One Twitter user wrote, "What a ludicrous question! Clapping is a sign of appreciation, of joy, of entertainment, and no, and so no, it shouldn't be banned." And How about this? How about this, sweetie? And a, th a third She's person really said, clapping. clapping isn't exactly the loudest thing at a theater. You know what? Uh, you know what? How about this? Instead of jazz hands, if you don't like clapping, instead of jazz hands, how about we give you the finger? How's that? <laughs> well, plus, um, as, somebody, as, as, somebody who, as somebody who's worked with theater, um... Some, something like clapping is a, is a good is a good is a good measure to show how well your performance had a reaction and in stand up like I'm I'm trying to imagine a stand up a stand up guy working with, working with jazz hands and it's just not going to work nope no no cuz no I'm you can, sorry you no. can deal with a lack of clapping in theater but in stand up where you have where where you have to work on the fly to determine what jokes are going to land and what jokes aren't. You need that aud you need that auditory response. Yeah. <laughs> oh. 
Drink, by the way. <laughs> drink. Definitely drink. Absolutely. Then, we haven't laughed at Polygon in a week. Let's fix that. Oh, yes! Speaking oh, of drink. Oh, yeah. Drink from Polygon! Yep. Yep! <laughs> so, um, and Mildred, real quick, before you move on, I just want to say one thing. Hey, Snowflake. You... You special little sweetheart. Aww. You're the one that put yourself out there in front of hundreds, thousands, potentially millions of people. And you're so upset about people <laughs> clapping. Oh, you poor, poor, poor Aww. thing. Oh, I'm then so what? sorry. I'm so sorry. Hold I'm on. so Hold on. Here we go. Keep going. <laughs> yeah. I'm so yeah. sorry that you just you those evil people the, praising praising your performance, but it was just so so stressful for you that they they can't they can't clap for you. They can't praise your performance. They, oh no! Tell them to stop clapping, please, please, please tell them, please tell them to stop. Oh my God! No, no! It's it's, it's terrible! It's terrible! It's, it's ruining my life! I, 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 I'm, 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 I'm breaking down. I can't. I don't know what to do. I, 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 yeah, go fuck yourself, bitch. Oh, by the way, drink for you being a fucking you know pussy. Not only that, she needs to do one thing right now. Put your motherfucking head back down. Damn fucking right. Go right ahead. Actually, real Go quick. Right ahead. You know, AEW has a very simple way to do it. They include a room where you could go. If it gets, if the audit, if this, if the senses are flaring up and you need time, they have a room where you could actually calm down and relax and still watch the show and enjoy the show. Wait a minute, AEW yes. got safe space? They got an auditory, auditory safe space. Yeah. Oy and that's this is no, one of those no, cases they, where I'd be where I would be fully I'd be fully willing to understand it, especially oh yeah, since the pyro and all that crap. The, py the pyro, yeah. the fact that the fact that when you're at a when you're at a lot when you're at an event live, it can yeah it can, it get, get, it can get it gets pretty very mad. bombastic. It gets overwhelming. It gets very bombastic, especially since it especially since music can also be, be super fucking this. loud at times. Trust me, I've been to one myself. I know. I'll take yeah. I'll that's take a little more understandable. That. I'll take that over eliminating clapping, you dumb bitch. Yeah, just imagine not being able to do. Just imagine not being able to do that in, say, Japan, for an, for a yeah. Japan match. No, but Polygon is starting. Is starting to is is now is now whining that they can no longer abide a 100 hour oh, RPG God. because you shouldn't make everything a side quest. Uh, oh fucking Christ! Now, you know what it is. Now well, here's, definitely drink. Here's the now here's, here's the, what yeah, here's ahead. here's the thing. I understand want I understand wanting sh wanting shorter games to a degree, but si but you do not have you do not have that pos you do not have that um, position. And then there was this excerpt saying, "I wish more games would follow in Obsidian's footsteps here." Um, the reason Obsidian made their games slightly shorter is they don't have a big ass budget. Because um, I'm realizing that I have no more patience left for the 100 plus hour RPG. Um, 100 Let me plus hours to that. is not exact is not exactly common, anyways. Sometimes. Let me respond game, to this. You go ahead. Go ahead. Sometimes a game catches my attention. Perhaps the combat looks excellent, or the protagonist seems cool, and then the hype train begins. Hundreds of hours of deep and complex quest combat. Um, that's a that's a hype thing, not the actual thing. The game promises an ongoing narrative that requires your constant attention. Uh, so, you collect a party yeah. of characters you'll love like your own family, and chances are you can crop up forty minutes later to de to you can make crop up forty. The choices you can make can crop up forty minutes later to devastate them. Um, how is that a bad thing? Every time yeah, I hear they this, would not. They would. They, you would you, not like ogre battle, my friend. And this person claims that every time they hear a game described in this way, they break out into a cold sweat. No, you don't. You are not literally no. shaking. Yeah, like I said, you would not like ogre battle, buddy. And here's the, th you know why, and let me add to this. You want to know why they want fucking shorter games? 
I'll tell you why. It's it be, so you can give so you can put out more trash product because these idiots live and die by this credo. Don't ask questions. Just consume product and then get excited for next product. What I see it. What I see it. Very is, much. Is is the I um I'm not even gonna bring up the RPG comparison because I because. Let me give one little counter argument to a, to a genre that has a lot has a lot of length, a lot of replay value, and if you took this argument with them, they would rip you they would rip you to pieces and then piss on the remains. It ex, the expanded version of this genre's name is expand, explore, exploit, exterminate. Oh yes. The 4X genre. Hundreds of hours of civilization. It's like, oh, I'll, I'll just play, I'll, I'll just play end the space for a few hours. It's not it. And, the, and then, and then I'll be done. The for hours the turn into days. <laughs> 10 hours later. Yep. We're all one familiar. With, we're all familiar with the curse of one more turn. <laughs> but next. Anyway. I wanted I wanted to briefly cover this because um I've seen I've seen some I've seen some bad takes regarding Death Stranding and yeah we're gonna get to some worse takes. But well, yeah, oh, yeah, Nathan it, Brown really over at, at over at Edge magazine is is getting pissy about the fact that that um the that they had to finish the game before they could re- before they could review it. And oh, apparently boo-hoo. they ran out of enthusiasm. But then they then the mask comes off when when he goes or put it this way. I told my wife this morning that this that the Death Stranding reviews were out, and she said, "Oh, was that the game about the backpacks that you hated?" And <laughs> I love that I love that Psyops had the fir- had the first thing saying, "Sure, enthusiasm was the problem. I bet the lack of enthusiasm was not being was due to not being good enough to progress the story to its conclusion." And no! uh, oh, nothing oh, is oh, ever oh. good enough for these idiots. You know, Hideo Kojima was kind enough to give you a urinalist mode, and you're still bitching. And uh, by the way, drink. Yep, drink. Pretty much. Nothing's ever oh, good for fuck. these assholes. Cat. Uh, oh man, it's got. Sorry. Cat, I didn't mean to hit you on the head with a beer. <laughs> well, Aww. that was payback well, from earlier. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, beer we, can, Dave. We've um, we've talked we've talked briefly about No Not November and the fact that I kind of I kind of made an in joke regarding the title of the of this week's um, stream. But <laughs> I want I want I want to I want to point out that. Trying to claim that No Nut November has far right roots? What the fuck? That's stupid. What? Listen, again, No Nut November, in my opinion, I consider a stupid gimmick. But how can you out? How can you out stupid a stupid gimmick with a stupid statement describing that stupid gimmick? <laughs> yeah. Now, here's the thing. For those who've never heard of this whole thing or have outright tried to ignore it, which I don't blame you, it started out as a joke called No Fat November because, well, it was encouraging more sexual freedom. That was the whole point. But then people took it further and just said, No Nut November, meaning you don't orgasm at all, which that point it starts getting stupid already. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and already cringy ass memes like Coomer, and even yeah. Paul Joseph Watson. Even though I like the guy, that I think the guy's way off base. In fact, I think Ian Miles Chong. Say what you will about the guy, but you know what? He's got a good point about about this whole thing. It's it. It basically the thing is he said that no nut November is based is a, the fact that the thing is because that too many men struggle with jerking off. And, and they have the addiction, which does exist. Yes, you can be addicted to this this shit. But you here's can. the pro- but here's the thing. I think, and this is my personal opinion, is that I think it's more related to a lot of other er, under underlying problems, such as stress 
And consider you're dealing with this clown world society. I don't, I don't, I don't blame most of these people that do this shit. Yeah, I'll straight up tell you, I don't participate. Fuck no nut November. Fuck it hard. I, I, per, per person, the closest that I'll go with is, 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 is no shave Movember because that, because that was to help raise awareness for prostate cancer. That's as far as I go. But once again, when you're trying to claim every, when you're trying to claim everything is far right, nothing is. Yeah. Again, you're, you're, yeah. Like I said, it's a stupid gimmick. Ignore it. But you're trying to out stupid the stupid gimmick. That's not going to help you. But then we no. ended up getting to YouTube's bullshit. Okay. <laughs> if I may, this, this. When I saw this, I had to call it out. So, Monk, if you don't mind. Shades, take point. Hit the, hit the music. What song are we hitting here? The rant music. Oh, uh, I think he went the soapbox. Oh, yeah, soapbox yeah. yeah. Soapbox time. Oh, you crack a fucking beer while you guys listen. Because, oh, oh. boy, is it going to get fucking fun. Okay, all right. Oh yeah, toss me one of those, Doku. Give me a second. <laughs> and yeah. beers in what? beers in your quarter, bro. Take it <laughs> thank away. You, thank you, sir. So here's the sh here's the shit. I'm sure a lot of you have already heard about this because, well, considering who's involved, you kind of couldn't miss it. So recently, popular YouTuber Markiplier, and I'm sure most of you know who the fuck that is, was doing a stream for his new YouTube original series, The Heist. Mm -hmm. And he was doing a thing where basically he was having fans vote using emotes to determine which path he was going to take because the heist is a choose your own adventure type thing, which was cool. And he was asking people to choose either red or green paddles that he had e emotes that he created that they created, though they could use any other red or green emotes to do this as well. And of course, as a lot of people tend to do in the chat, a lot of them would spam it. They'd have it like ten or fifteen of these emotes in one ch in one t in one chat. Kind of normal. Well, apparently nobody told Google that because peop Google decided to not only suspend them on YouTube. It wasn't just a simple suspension. No, they outright banned, perma banned their entire Google account, their Gmail, their documents, everything. Gone! Wiped out! And when people tried to uh, appeal this, at first, now this has since apparently been corrected some to some extent, but at first, YouTube wasn't even looking at it. They were just outright denying every appeal that was coming in to the point where Mark himself made a video saying, What the fuck, Google? Yep. And, um... I, I have I have to point out that if I get the feeling that the only reason that there was backpedaling on this, and I suspect that we're gonna hear some some PR shit from from Susan Wojcicki in about a week, is the is the fact that you ha that if he didn't get a response, he could have just threatened YouTube and saying, "I'm taking my platform somewhere else." And then you and then YouTube would have been in some would have been in some serious trouble. Oh yeah, because this, that, you know, this I, I was talking to me about this last night, Monk. This is the Twitch situation all over again, because all it's going to take is for the right video platform at the right time and the right creator to jump ship to it, and you're going to see exactly what's starting to happen with Twitch. Mm -hmm. You may not like Ninja, you may not like a lot of the Twitch creators that are jumping ship to Mixer, but you can't deny that that is a sign. And I, Twi no, I was um when I saw when I saw the interview, I was fully on board with why he made the jump. He wanted he wanted to do stuff more than more than just more than just stream on their and do their terms. He wanted to he wanted to expand his own brand. Okay, are you talking about uh, are you talking about Markiplier? Well, yeah. Well, we're going to talk about Ninja's jump to uh, Mixer, yeah. but in relation to what's happening with Markiplier, because if this hap keeps happening, the same thing's going to happen there. 
a big creator, someone with millions of subscribers is going to jump to another platform and you're going to start to see the same slow burn that's going to be ha- that's already starting to happen with Twitch. Now, yeah. There was a related story. So, it's time we talked about Jim for the first time ever. Yes. So, Medicare had was apparently demonetized for content violations despite the fact that he had nuked his whole channel. You know, what? and he well, was he and he was nuked for reused content. But eh? there's only one. Ch- there's only like one channel on his video, and if it's over, if it's over the live streams, he doesn't save live streams. Yeah, in fact, he's mo- he's migrated. On a- he's migrated a bit. Shoot. Mm-hmm. Um. Also, he let slip that he that that. That uh, even when even when videos are demonetized, they still take the ad money. Uh oh. Yeah. That. Oh. That's greed. Oh, you want to talk about greedy? I think we need to move on. Ace, if you would. Oh wait! It gets better. <laughs> oh. So just when we thought the YouTube debacle wasn't bad enough. Then comes the next part of this tale. Oh, boy. Because a recent update to YouTube's Terms of Service is coming. And one of the biggest changes has the entire YouTube community in an outright panic. Because here's the exact quote from YouTube's new TOS. And I quote, YouTube may terminate your access or your Google account's access to all or part of the service if YouTube believes in its sole discretion that provision of the service to you is no longer commercially viable. They've they've enact they've so in other words, YouTube has activated Order sixty six. Now, basically, if you're not making the money, they're gonna cut you off completely. Now, here's Good thing here's I moved the thing all I- my videos to BitChute. Here's the here's the thing I here's the th- something I want to point out. I and I only found out about this earlier today, mostly because it was covered by Arch. They recently had to deal with a fine from the FTC because they because of the fact that they were they and that fine was about 170 million dollars. Because they got busted collecting data from miners. And mm. beca- and now they have to enact these policies where it's where it's outright sti- where it's um out where it's outright stated whether or not a u- whether or not a user is or is isn't a miner and a bunch of a bunch of other stuff with some very vague rulings. Which, which I feel is go. I feel is going to be one more form of foot bullet. The because the they have been YouTube has of course been trying so desperately to try and be to try and be to try and be Netflix and hate to break it to you but it's not going to work. The but more important but. More important, but more importantly, this whole this whole th- this whole thing of of taking of taking people down if it's not commercially viable and based on their discretion. If they end up going through with that next month, I could see a lawsuit happening. Yep, I could see a lot of lawsuits. A lot I could of see lawsuits, a class action lawsuit violations up the ass because even if even if I. The question, the question I have to ask is this: What if someone decided not to choose, not decide not to not to monetize the reviews? They chose not to monetize, not to monetize. Like me, for example, I don't like to monetize my shit. What if they decide that that that's not good enough, and my channel gets gets sent gets sent to the shadow realm? Mm-hmm. You know what? Not this is this could be the ultimate foot and mouth because you know what people are going to be doing? They're going to go to vent shoot. And look, YouTube, you have to decide whether or not you are a platform or a publisher. If if you 
this whole this whole wishy-washy attitude, this is the reason why you're having so much problems. If you're going to decide that you're a publisher, all right, then that then that's per then perfectly fine. You've just got you just got to do a, lo a whole lot of rollbacking. If you're a platform, this is going to bite you on the ass harder. They're in a known Google doesn't realize they're in a no-win situation with this one. So, but speak, speaking of situations, let's talk about Kojima being taken out of context. Oh, yeah. Here's the, here's the thing with Kojima, okay? I'll be honest with you. As, as For many good games he's done, this guy loves the smell of his farts too much, to be honest. No, I'd... it's the easiest way to say it. He doesn't want to make video games anymore. He wants to make movies. Okay, Kojima, go make a movie. Well, looks yeah. like looks like he's looks like he's pivoting in that direction. He did, he did want to say that Kojima Productions wants to be a multi, wants to be a multimedia thing. So, yeah. So more power to him. Here's the problem. But here's the problem, though. You're going to be kissing a lot of Hollywood ass. That's not good. We don't. But know he that. knows Guillermo del Toro and Norman Reedus, and he's got all these people saying he's such a blah blah blah. Who gives a yeah? Fuck? Who gives you a got, crap? Um, guys, you're losing the plot. So, I know. I just had to say my piece about the about the guy. That was that was not him. a piece. That was a that was a pre, that was a premature rant. Yeah. The point is is that now we have people people in the NPC crowd have been desperately looking for some sort of gotcha to say that Japanese video games are as political as as those in the West in the in quotes. And in this case, they decided to take him out of context because he was ex he was talking about the themes of Death Stranding, namely, namely isolation and and the importance of connection. And one of the things he brought up is how is how Trump and Brexit have ca have caused these tribalist isolations. That was he used that as an example. It wasn't. He wasn't trying. He wasn't making any statements. He wasn't trying about, to go. So, bas so basically, he wasn't trying to go Orange Man bad. No, it was. It was about. It was about these. These are examples of of what of people being, ice of people being isolated and stuck in their little groups and not connecting, which is a major theme that he's that he's going with with Death Stranding, since one of the major story story points is trying to create a chiral network that's basically a spiritual successor to the internet by connecting all across America. And people have been trying to argue that he was trying to make some statement about Trump and Brexit when he when he wasn't. One of the main people trying to push this bullshit was Ashley Lynch. Of course, drink for that bitch. Yep. Yeah. And he is tr he is he is trying to represent connection with it with his work, and of course, GameSpot, the Independent, and Forbes were trying to say that he was taking a political stance, which oh boy, sorry, carbonation, is unlikely as the article goes on because this game started development in 2015, when he was a when he was a can when Trump was a candidate for Republican nomination. And th and this was six months before the first Brexit referendum. So, and and every report that I've seen from the game, from people who have finished it and people who have not finished it, mentions absolutely nothing about current year politic. Mm. So, this but then again, this is from the same kind. These this argument is from the same kind of people who tried to do the who tried to do the everything is political argument, which I find incredibly fascist. Yeah, number two, two. I don't... Number two, <laughs> they're just... Yeah, basically, that's one... That's a hell of a reach right there. Yeah. And nobody has ever said that Japanese games aren't political. What you're doing is a confusion fallacy. You're, you, you're trying to confuse two interpretations of a phrase... To try and ar to try and argue for a point that isn't being made, but then there was that whole thing with Game Revolution. 
saying that saying that Japanese developers don't touch on politics while Western ones will shoehorn into titles. Although she points she points in two counter arguments. One, the whole "you're the reason we needed to build that wall" that was in Life is Strange Two that was so cringeworthy I did a spit take. And then there was the whole out. Let's make Outworld great again. <laughs> and I think Jay Step has a good has had a good point when he said it's a difference between show versus shove. Yeah, more like entertain, you know, more like entertainment versus propaganda because because like I said, the out here in the West, the line has is pretty much non-existent or at least barely visible. Mm-hmm. And some some check mark named Gabe Gerwin is claiming that Sophia was indirectly directing harassment. Oh fuck off, biatch! But and hey, that was that was a fuck up. So next we have the fact that Andrei Sapolsky is, as always, a fucking idiot. Of course. Where he had stated that he does not care what is done with his character in film. Thing. I do not care what is done with my character in film or in other context, even if it is clear he is my character and always will be my character. Basically, he is not involved in the development of the Netflix series, which that's a huge red flag. Yep. Yep. But then again, Sapkowski's a moron. He just wants that he wants just wants that fuck money. Yeah. Well, that's what happens. You, you take here's what happens to your this is what happens you give away your IP for nilly 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 and and all these freaking these freaking ham and eggers come in and basically bastardize it which is exactly what they're doing with the Witcher on Netflix so you know what 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 sub uh, Subkowski you know what Mr Cal I think DJ Khaled has a few words for you hold on a second congratulations. You played yourself. So apparently he was in, he worked as a consultant in the initial writing phase, but he was not involved in actual production. So basically, they took his shit under advisement, but they, then they probably said, you know what, fuck it, we're throwing that out. You and know, then in a press conference he said, I just, write, I just write words, but when I write I don't see anything, I don't imagine anything. I don't know the difference between a craftsman and an artist. But one thing is certain, I'm an artist. I'm a fucking artist. I've been creating just like Leonardo painted the Mona Lisa. Wow! Arrogant much? Stay off the damn weed! Good lord! Oh. See, this is this is the reason why the writer for Metro blew you out when you tried to sue CD Projekt Red. And I guarantee you this. In ten years, more people are going to remember the Witcher trilogy that they made over the Netflix series that you were involved with. Especially since, and I, I only found out about this in the last couple of days, thanks, I believe Ace had brought this up. They are yeah. shooting. Oh, yes. They are shooting for seven seasons. Uh, <laughs> they'll barely make it to the second one. Now, now, here's the thing. Anyone who's familiar with Witcher, uh, the original content of The Witcher, mind you, this series is not based on the games. Nope. Yeah. As evidenced by, you know, the fact that, quote-unquote, Yennefer looks horrible and looks younger than Ciri, and they're going with a completely different storyline from her, and yada, yada, yada. The books are some of the driest material you will ever read. <laughs> like, you think it's you think it's bad enough in, like, the Lord of the Rings, quote-unquote, we're going to name every fucking tree branch shit, and Game of Thrones, we're going to have every single bit of political intrigue that happened between five weeks ago and now in painstaking detail? The Witcher is worse. It, like I tried reading it, I couldn't get through it. Yeah, basically, you know, Razor Fist put it best. A lot of it ripped off Elric. Look, I've I've stayed I've stayed in my piece on the whole ri- on the whole rip off thing. I find I find I find the argument to be disingenuous, considering considering I've understood why The Witcher ended up becoming such a fixture. It had it, but but I would I would actually ar- I would actually argue that CD Projekt Red and their and their development team did more f- did more for the series than Andrei Sapowski ever could. Yeah, and I think I think the f- 
the reason why I can, the reason why I bring up the comparison between between him and the writer of Metro, whose name currently escapes me, unfortunately, is that he was very directly involved with not only his own users when he put when he uh, put, when he put his book online, and thus had a kind of writer publisher relationship with his own with his own writing base. But he he had a significant amount of involvement when it came to the games. That's true. It was also ooh yeah. Go ahead. It was it was just that for um he they the only they couldn't use Metro twenty thirty four because its story its storyline would the approach that they had when it came to doing a sequel was he had approached hey I got I got Metro twenty twenty thirty four you want you want to use that for your games like. This doesn't quite work. Can you whip up something for us? And he did, and we got Last Light, which has some flaws, but it's overall good. Yeah, and, and not only that, I think and the, the best part is if CD Projekt Red got a lot of mileage from The Witcher, despite the fact their original author did, did not throw, did throw very rote, I would say rote at best effort into helping develop it, Think of what how Cyberpunk 2077 is going to be when you have Michael Pondsmith pretty much, much working directly with them every, almost every step of the way. Yep. Also, Pondsmith made a better version of Witcher when he did the RPG. Really? Yeah, he did he did a Witcher RPG using using his interlock system. Mm. And I don't know if it won it, but it got dangerously close to winning an Origins award. Damn. So, next, I know it's I know it's um a I know it's a sport around here to take to take shots at um at Disney Star Wars, but Anthony Daniels has no chill, saying he of course not he <sighs> feels that his character's roles in the Star Wars sequels felt like a table decoration. His words. He's not wrong. And he also understands why fans are unhappy with The Last Jedi. And The Last Jedi is definitely a case of we of we de, of um the shadow of that thing is going to haunt whatever they whatever they do in the future regarding Star Wars films. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. that's gonna leave a stain. Mm-hmm. But then we had this and um Maddie, I believe you specifically want, wanted wanted to wanted to tackle this particular thing because oh. you saw it as much as I did, and I've ar- I've already made it clear I fucking hated the movie. You hated it. I enjoyed it for what it was, which was a popcorn movie. I will say this: Linda Hamilton stole the show. Arnie's still good a- a- as a funny Terminator. The two ladies that were that became the protagonists did their job as well as they possibly could. But you know what we say. Get woke. Go, go broke. broke. Yep. I mean, come on. An ice facility? Come on. Stop it with the orange man bad garbage. Drink for that, by the way. Mm-hmm. And... This thing is yeah, facing like a law. It yeah, it made it made about seventy nine million and poss- and possibly some more from international markets. But that what? But it cost about one hundred and eighty and change to one hundred and eighty million and change to make, and that's not even taking into account the marketing budget, which probably makes it probably makes it so they needed they probably needed about two hundred or three hundred million in order to break even. Yeah, and it's so like far said, they're not because sh- the. The first week, you only got seventy nine million, and that and that's going to be your peak. Yeah, that's the yeah, and that's what that's what that's what an that's the, this is the sad thing. Why the fuck did you bring back Arnold and Linda Hamilton? They couldn't save this shit burger. Appar- apparently, James Cameron, who was producing, has thrown the director under the bus. But yep. given the given what tip given what director Tim Miller had this. Had to had to say. I think you deserve this. 
when he when he decided to to give a I don't give a fuck to the quote unquote misogynists that aren't happy with Mackenzie Davis. Congratulations, you played yourself. Yeah, you know what? And this also calls into question in one thing. Who really directed the Deadpool movies? It probably wasn't Miller. I would I would actually I I'm actually on the mindset that that um Reynolds was was more involved yep. than than if, Miller was. And if and I believe Ryan Reynolds is slated to make a directorial debut in the future. So if that's the case, oh boy, I think Ryan Reynolds got a bright future with as a director. Mm-hmm. Now, this is the next ones are kind are kind of brief, are kind of brief ones. The first we have is so apparent apparently refusing to have. To have sex with a, with a transgender model is gra- is grounds for a hate crime. What? What? Then again, she, then really? again, she's a model, so she prob so she probably is that vapid. She don't look that. Here's the deal. She, from what I'm looking at here, she ain't nothing to write home about. Uh uh-uh. uh. I've seen some trans transsexual models. I've seen some transsexual porn stars. Those, some of them are way hotter than this fool. You know what I mean? It's like, no wonder no one wants to sleep with you. I mean, that, yeah, that, I'm sorry. That's That to me is completely ridiculous, okay? You can, ha- you can be happy being transsexual, whatever. I don't give a flying fuck. Yeah. But you can't expect everyone to bend over backwards to want to sleep with you just because of that. Yeah, and, this... no, and not only that. Yeah, and not only that. If a, if a guy did that shit, you know what would be happening? They would, they would be called an incel. Yeah. Double standard, assholes, doesn't fly. Mm-hmm. So this is why I can... Compl- Sophia Narwitz did a did a video not too long ago say, saying that the trans community has become their own worst enemy. Yep. I think this is this kind of stuff is the reason why, and I will link that video in the council later. Oh yeah, I've seen that video, and I remember I remember um, I, rem- I remember t- I remember Tara having a few having a few rants on on the matter as well. Oh wait a minute, Tara Sophia had a rant about it. I didn't hear about this. It. It was more. It was. It was during. It was during one of her. Sh- one of her shorter vids. But, All her streams. Mm-hmm. But <laughs> then yeah, we had this particular true. case. Now I. I talked about this briefly, but Schreier apparently does not like being on the town. Cro- Fucking drink. The town. Cr- the town. Cr- the town crier does not. Does not. Li- does not like the fact that he got memed on. And tried to claim that Mark Kern is a right winger. Oh, for God's Welcome sake! Welcome to the goddamn internet, you bitch. Damn. Claiming that he—no, wait, it's worse. He claimed that he is an alt-right troll. Huh? You calling this guy one of the create the 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 mind behind one of the most seminal works that Blizzard has ever put out? A fucking troll. <laughs> you know what you need to do, you crier, you, you weaselly, nasty piece of shit. You need to do one exact thing right now. Put your motherfucking head back down. Look, just because you're mad that you're that you might end up losing your damn job because you can't because you can't stick to because you can't stick to games for more than a more than an extra day. <laughs> and what? Oh god damn it! Yeah, Doesn't the, look. Welcome to the internet. Everybody gets roasted, including us. Yeah. The only difference is we can take it. We can take it oh, and we allegedly. can push it out. Yeah, allegedly. Yeah. Although um, phrasing. But <laughs> before that, yeah, we have. I have to make an announcement, folks. We have what? an unholy quartet tonight. Yes! Board the longboats, kitties! Woo boy! In fact, if somebody can get in, somebody can get an artwork of, a, of us boarding the longboats, 
Much like, much like Askeladd bo doing the, doing the leading the boat thing. Just so I can do yeah. a drive me closer, I want to hit them with my sword. Um, that'd be much appreciated. But, we, at first I thought we were only going to get three out of four, but then we got some last minute entries. So first, we only have one life 2K. Okay. Hold on a second. I gotta do something here. Because as we always do in here in the monastery, when one life 2k comes up, we gotta say this to Zelnik. Alanet Elak Zelnik! Rosetta Stone Arabic, motherfucker! <laughs> that shit was rehearsed, ladies and gentlemen. Well, you know you get into Carnegie Hall, right? Practice. Practice, Practice yes. motherfucker. Yep. So, Red Dead Redemption 2 has come out on PC. Okay. But apparently, the fact that Rockstar decided to do their own proprietary launcher has been causing problems. <laughs> Good oh. thing I'm waiting. Good thing so, I'm waiting. So, another company made their own launcher, and now the games on it are, are not working properly? This is my surprised face. Imagine no. my shock. Now, apparently, if you have this on medium settings, there's not much in the way of problems. But if you try and go on high end settings, if you if you're if you've got if you've got like a GTX 1080 or that kind of thing, then things start breaking. Ooh. Ooh. Ran random freezes, and there was that one meme that showed up on the. Uh, on the subreddit, but apparently turning off some of the cores on the CPU might ha might help. Um, apparently, other people are getting an activation required um, message when they try and launch, and launching uh, in and out of the Rockstar launchers go in. Bad optimization. Rockstar has added some cr some crash troubleshooting tips and a and a launcher <laughs> patch. You know what? Maybe it's a good. It's actually a good thing I'm waiting for the Steam version in in hindsight. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. And let's see. We have a launch issues mega thread. Oy vey. Which is just goes and goes and goes. And goes and goes. It's this the Energizer Bunny. It keeps going and going and it's going. It's time for saying, kids. This is the thread that does it end. End. It goes on and on, my friend. friend. <laughs> <laughs> it keeps derping and derping and derping <laughs> and derping <laughs> and derping. Was this made by the New York derp. Giants? <laughs> <laughs> I knew it. Derp, derp. But yeah, you had one job, and you still meant, and you still managed to fuck it up. Uh, hold on, like... hold on, I got the perfect button for this. Oh, you! Ah! <laughs> like I said before, yeah, releasing it on Epic and 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 uh. Maybe, maybe, maybe at this point, this is probably a reverse, reverse f you to, to Epic. Yeah, yeah, we'll give you the game early, but we'll give it to you unoptimized. I get, I get the feeling that this is going to get fixed pretty damn quickly once the mods get, once the modders get a hold of it on Steam. Ooh, yeah. Oh boy. I mean, I don't like that I'm relying on that because it feels because it's a very bitch says the thing to do, and we'll get to them later. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh yeah. But. But that it that's I didn't have that was the only one that I had for One Life Two K. But I felt I felt it was apropos. It was a big fuck up. But next we've got we've got some oh we've got some old friends retur returning, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> the asshats of Activision. <laughs> Ma -ma 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 
Fuck you, Kodak. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you, you belong in jail, buddy. We know. Fire about it, Kodak. We've seen your name on that black book. And, and hang on a hang on a moment because Restream's chat is fucking with me. Oh, also, God. Ace, we're hearing your background again. How the fuck are you hearing anything? There is nothing running. Are you hearing something to talk? No. no, it's it's not that. We're hearing something coming from you, though. Mm -hmm. Which yeah, makes no right. goddamn sense. Unless it's my heavy breathing. <sighs> yeah, breathing like freaking Darth Vader over there. Mm. It's not like I have to say give in to your anger. Ace, sorry to tell you, but you're not black enough to be James Earl Jones. <laughs> <laughs> Um, voice, right. is at, voice is asking if Bethesda can get its own song. Where's Activision's EAs and Ubisoft? Were you not just listening? Good <laughs> God! How long you How long you been watching this stream for? I know. I no, 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 no. Wait, wait, hold up. I think he means like someone's actually made a song for Bethesda. Oh, oh. So why? I'm, I'm pretty sure he's not um, talking about our themes. Yeah. I'm pretty. Sh I'm pretty sure it has, and if not, I'm pretty sure V the musical will will have it in in the future. But Diablo Four, you had me, uh, and uh -oh. then you lost me. Yeah, uh, be dreaded. Hamor drops again. You did. Yeah, I I knew I knew Blizzard was gonna be stupid. Cause of course they would. It's fucking yeah. Activision Blizzard. Yeah. You, had new, yes. you had a well, you had a perfectly a good word. transmogrification system. <laughs> there, that's how you pronounce it, Yong Ye. I did it better than you, and I'm not even getting paid. <laughs> <laughs> Damn! Tell us how you really feel, Monk. <laughs> no, no bully, Yong Ye. I like you, but um, it's not that it's not that hard. Transmogrification. I'm not even drunk enough for this. So and so anyway, <laughs> this was first brought. This was first brought to our attention, thanks to SkillUp, because apparently they are doing the dreaded microtransactions. Of course, they're and into the trash it goes. They, there's the yep. claim that it's going to be cosmetic, and all I have to say is, when I saw the whole thing, I had to retweet and said, La "Laughs in Grim Dawn and Warhammer Chaos Bane, <laughs> and Opera, <laughs> and Blade." I got to throw out Grim Dawn. Oh, Grim. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, God. Aaron, Grim Dawn is made by the same team that did Titan Quest. Oh. And they've also, managed to do something that I don't see do, done, being done a lot in Diablo clones. Multiclassing. Nice. nice. I'll have to try that out, man. But yeah. Blizzard. Activision. Blizzard. Here, let, let's talk a minute here. You realize that at this time, after every time this has happened... When you say it's cosmetic only, nobody believes you. <laughs> Let's not forget the fact that once again they're doing always online. Dumb. That's the first red flag right there. <sighs> yeah, hold on. I, I yeah. <laughs> exactly. See, I barely tolerated the the always online with the with Diablo three because I was under the impression that we would eventually get some degree of co op, and we did. It was just quite a while after the initial release. But if 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 they're saying that they want that they want to do exp if they want to do expansions. If it's the if it's an expansion in the same way as say Lord of Destruction or Reaper of Souls, okay, fine. I'm willing to go with that because those are usually cheaper than the base game and offer a lot of offer a lot of stuff, new classes, dungeons, stories, quests, all that kind of stuff. But doing microtransactions and expansions, no, nope. Go back, try yep. again. Play that. Play that. Nope. That note clip, please. Got the note clip? Oh, sorry. Sorry. Yeah. Nope. No times no divided by no to the power of oh hell no. 
Well, it's definitely, it's definitely, a, it's definitely. See, this is why, this is why I did that whole Blizzard alternative video, because unlike, unlike in the past, I don't have to rely on just Diablo to get my ARPG fix. There's a lot mm -hmm. of shit I can go with. Plenty of options. Mm-hmm. And, plen and plenty more coming. I was playing Creature in the Whale well earlier, and um, I wouldn't co I wouldn't say that's completely an ARPG, but it does have it does have some of the DNA. But it's more of a puzzle game than a, than a hack and slash. Mm -hmm. A very interesting one because I've never seen pinball be used in an action game like that. <laughs> but it and no, the pinball stages in Sonic don't count. Yeah, Sonic's pinball doesn't count. I wasn't talking about that. I was just talking about the general pinball-esque stages. Oh, the bonus see. stage? Bonus stages or the casino-like stages that you see sometimes. Oh, that, yeah, the casino night stage. Yeah, I remember that from Sonic 2. Yeah, that, do that doesn't count. But next, we have the fact that <laughs> Blizzard apparently won't unban the shoutcasters after the whole Blitzchung thing. Well, considering what we've learned in the last last week or so... This sounds more like Jay Allen Brack won't unban them. Yeah, I think, I, yeah, it's starting to sound like the things are not not all hunky dory in Blizzard Town. There's dissension in the ranks. And, and we'll talk about that in the next article. And to be to be quite honest, I've I've do I think do I think the caster should have been reprimanded? Yeah, but but I don't think they should have been banned. Maybe a, maybe a temp maybe maybe like a a temp ban or just or just have or just have them just have them working on get working on getting coffee for a month but you yeah, just or just give them a give them like a stern warning says don't don't do this shit again yeah they they were an accessory <sighs> but then there's this now first off there's the there's the whole thing with um Kaplan okay Jeff I need you to answer me a very simple question you can either do a sequel or you can do an expansion. Pick one. Yeah. Saying he wants to challenge the industry on what a sequel is. No, you fucking don't. Uh, if, that was the, if that was the case, you would be making a full-on sequel. Yeah, but really. There's, this is not a sequel. But since you brought up the dissension in the ranks, I think that's. I think it's telling that. I think you're referring to the fact that Kaplan wants the wants Blitzchung to be unbanned. Yeah, definitely. I mean. For all the shit I'm give, I I get, I've been giving Kaplan, you know, I gotta agree with the guy. I'm, this is what I'm gonna give him. What was his reasoning as far as why, or did you not find out? Well, I believe. Hold on a second, because Cap, because I think Kaplan did state state about this about the Blitzchung situation. Hold on, let me see if I can find it. Ah, oh, well, of course it's on. It's on Polygon. Fuck that shit. All right. oh, never mind. I I found it. Fuck it. Um, I just I found no, I found it on P I found it on PC Gamer saying, "I'm obviously a huge supporter of free speech. It's something that's very important to me. It got to me personally. I think the punishment was too harsh, and I was greatly relieved when they gave his money back. I think that was extremely important. There was always a group of us involved in deciding what the punishment should be, and we would heavily devil's ad." heavily devil's advocate every part of the decision. So I was actually shocked when such a harsh penalty was levied. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this start, this starting to sound like, uh... I think that that decision to ban... to, to ban... To, to ban Blitz Chun was more China and Jalen Drek than it was Blizzard as a whole. Also, Brack, cut your damn hair. Yeah, you're Please. not... Yeah, the, yeah you're not a lead singer of Pearl Jam. Cut that shit. Yep. Now, I have I did see the trailer for Overwatch Two, and all I have to say is, Meh. you guys are you guys are wasting your potential because why have you not made a TV series out of this? Mm hmm. And, yeah, and I know made... somebody's going to go, but they made the comics. That doesn't count. Yeah, but the comics update twice every year. No. Even even yeah. with even with that, they're doing side stories. And this is yeah, this is a lost opportunity. You could you could make a mint with this shit. 
TV, movies, you the whole fucking schmear. Uh, even though that probably be it probably be badly written, but it's still but still still franchise potential. And this is something I just had to laugh at. So they so they they it's once again a case of it's never enough for some people. <laughs> because the the new the the new character who was who was announced and and all that the, and all that they can all that they can back in and all that they can say is is no is no black female heroes. Oh, and then God. and then when they finally then when they finally drop one, it's a case of, oh you oh you should have dropped it sooner. Respawn dropped one sooner than you guys. Oh, for God's sake! And you we know why. First off, I know why Blizzard did this. Distraction is the same shit they said that they made a character gay. Okay, it's, I mean you know oh, what? I'm, I'm not would... saying you're wrong, but um. If there's actually, if you're saying, if you're saying there's no I black women, then where does then are you are you saying Farah isn't black? Yeah. No, also, my uh, I think the I've got the perfect button to describe how some of these people are. Jesus God, woman, nothing is ever good enough for you. Of course if, not. It's never good enough for you. Awesome. If I may, go I ahead, may. go ahead, Ace. I can counterpoint on the black character. For the love of God, I can't remember her name. It's completely escaping me right now. But Sojourn. she actually... Sojourn, thank you. Sojourn's actually been confirmed in the lore since I believe like halfway through year two. So it's not a matter of appeasing people right now. She's been in there and they've been planning on making her a character. Okay. And there's been a lot of um, fan outcries like, when are we getting Sojourn as a character? Okay. And it's, and it's a, yeah, and it's not a matter of oh they just made her black. She's in the artwork and everything too. So just laying that out there for you. It wasn't just a snap. Oh, okay, person. that's fair enough. because <laughs> well, because because the problem was Blizzard's been having a history of doing this shit whenever a mm -hmm. fucking scandal comes out. Yep. And oh no, I totally agree with you. Um, I think game fans triggered by Bloodstain. <laughs> Whose idea was it to make a hidden jump scare boss in Bloodstain? <laughs> what, 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 what boss? What boss? Because I've been playing. I had played. I've been playing Bloodstain. Which boss is it? Apparently, if you haven't seen it, you don't know then. Because I've because I played the freaking that 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 bitch with with the fucking with the fucking blood bloody clothes and all that crap. Monster forty four. Monster for Monster forty four. Because I'm all I'm I'm all, I'm i have only made it to like the uh, that. That uh, Japanese let that Japanese st stage. Oh yeah, see, oh yeah, secret demon number forty-four. Hmm. I think I haven't. I, I don't know who is. The first and it's and it's dead. Who the fuck is secret demon forty-four? Um, Kun. Kune, 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 and um, did you? Did oh, you, you gotta get a hundred percent. Oh, I see. Yep. But moving on from that, apparently Overwatch Two is the reason why updates for the original have been sluggish. Which, of course, not too much of a surprise there. But then there was this whole thing where Lou Korea is calling on Blizzard to remedy racism in WoW. Simply because oh, some people Fox made sake. some spicy comments. Really, you jackass? You know what? Ah, look, look to your right, folks. Oh, it, actually, this is a case for all aboard because Lou yeah, Korea right, is folks. representative for California's 46th district. Of course. Oh all God. aboard! All aboard! All because all because all because some people made some made, had made some spi had done some spicy shit. Except this is how is this and how is this any different 
then pe then people posting spicy stuff in 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 WoW guilds or the like for the last ten, no, fifteen years, Tw almost twenty. Mm -hmm. I swear to God, you know what? You just dumbass woke ass congressman from California of all places. You should be paying more attention to your fucking wildfires and PG and E basically causing blackouts. But there's one thing you should do right now. Put your motherfucking head back down. It's a tr again. Why are you feeding trolls? Sure. This is this is actually one of the cases where the where the phrase "Okay, Boomer" is legitimately viable. This is apt. Not that cringe crap. Not that not you taking "Okay, Boomer" is a cringe cringe inch response. This is actually apt. Mm -hmm. And for the next one. We have we have a return of an old friend and one of the, and one of the cases where unfortunately I had to deflate shades. It is time for EA egregious assholes. <laughs> Okay, what did the gang do this time? Well, the first one that we have here is tangentially related, but I've, I was debating whether or not I would put this in Geeks or in the Unholy Quartet. The coin flipped, it landed on heads. So, EA it is. Alright, let's see what we got here. Anybody remember our old friend Manvier Hare? Oh, Manvier Hare, that, that fucking racist cunt. Drink and first first off, I know you think I know you think you're cute, but I hate to break it to you. You ain't run DMC. Lose How the does lose this... the tracksuit. You ain't run How DMC and you ain't Ukrainian off? enough for wear that. <laughs> yeah. You're not squatting, you don't know how to dance the hard boss, and you can't drink ink vodka like a fish. Now the question I need to ask is this. How the fuck does this trouser stain still have a job? Apparently, he's setting up an in apparently he's setting up an independent studio. And for those who have forgotten, this is the same guy who was arguing that white people shouldn't be playing Mass Effect Andromeda. Oh, for God's sakes! Now, granted, I would say that no that nobody, regardless of race, should be playing Mass Effect Andromeda. Nobody with nobody with north of two brain cells should. In fact, I, I, and there's the there's all there, and we have a um, collage of some of, of some of his, of some of his racist oh, things, like, yes. ruining ninety nine problems for me. I actually like that song, and I'm not the biggest fan of Jay Z. Yeah, really. Yeah, let yeah let's let's have a look at them, shall we? <laughs> let's, let's see. see. Good God! Wow. Yeah, this is fucking wow. And of course, Bioware supported his screeds until it got too uncomfortable, where he started taking shots at EA directly, and then they fired him. But he's oh, apparently yeah, working yeah. on corner wolves. Yeah, fall back like your hairline, you jackass. Which is which is supposed to be, I. The way I look at the when I looked at the description for corner wolves, you want to know what my thought process was. Yeah. This is a poor man's version of Empire of Sin. And Empire of Sin isn't even out yet. Yeah, really. It's just that instead of instead of taking place in old school Chicago, he wants to take place in old school Harlem. Now don't get me wrong, the premise uh, isn't a bad isn't a bad <coughs> idea isn't a bad idea. But I do not trust him with a ten foot pole with that premise. Mm mm. They'll make it all about race, they'll make it all about mo white people. Hell, says it takes says it probably takes place in like nineteen nineties is uptown. Even though that the, a certain incident that happened around the same time happened in in Brooklyn, I believe it was uh, God, what's it? Crown Heights. Yeah, are they trying? Are they trying to re? They're trying to re retell the story of, of the whole of the whole Crown Heights incident. Um. Oh, he put up he put up a medium post which Shades had uh, sh Shades had shared and Shades I honest I honestly feel bad because it seemed it seemed like you had some good good news and then I had to oh yeah yeah to be fair I didn't know the whole backstory so I I, I don't take offense mm -hmm. that's okay but 
first <laughs> off, he decides to be pretentious by quoting Maya Angelou in his thing. Like, seriously? Oh, uh, really? Uh, You're not even black, you idiot! Yeah, and apparently he's he's stating that Corner Wolves is supposed to be his first universe. It's set in, and yeah, it is set in mid '90s Harlem. Oh, I think Saying see. that it's about so they... where Jacinta, a young Afro Latina, embarks on a mission to find her father's killer. Which is supposed to tell the stories of young people growing up in the hood and how their lives are shaped and defined by the war on drugs as they are caught between dope dealers, hustlers, and overzealous police. Is this is this an excuse for them to play so he could play a fucking Mob Deep or fucking Wu Tang and uh, Biggie um, in the background? Appar- apparently, music supervision is handled by Just Blaze. Huh. Okay, qu- quick question here: Have they revealed what the gameplay for this is going to be? Nope. They've just stated okay. that they're ma- that they're making a diverse universe. Which, first off. You shouldn't be focusing uh, on making a universe. You should be focusing on making a game first. No, because yeah. you know what this sounds like to me? Hey, you wanted to write a book. Go write a fucking book. Yeah, really. Look. Now I'm only i I'm only making the guess that they want that they want to try and be like Empire of Sin because I'm guessing they want to go isometric since that's an easy that's a, a low budget thing to do. But Look, you gotta show you. Get, if you end up showing me something that's actually impressive and actually not, and actually not what I think you are, Manvir, then I will I will give you your I will give the devil its due. But I have mm-hmm. no I have absolutely no confidence that you were able to do that. Plus, you were not a lead designer with Andromeda. You were a coffee boy. Yeah, exactly. Oh. You're ham and eager. The person, a who, the person who was the who was the driving force with Mass Effect from day one, was Casey Hudson, not you. Yeah, yeah really. It is, yeah, this freaking I think the reason venture. why he puts on that track is because he opened up his studio in New York City. Oh, yeah, because he wants to be cool. Well, hey, Skeezix, you ain't cool. You You're fucking, fucking chilly. chilly. And chilly, chilly ain't never, never been cool. cool. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and now for a case of All right, boys. Oh, go on ahead. that note, on that note, boys, I gotta go to bed. I try to hang on on as much, but uh, yeah, no, same with me. I gotta take the kids to school in the morning, so no worries, yeah. man. Good night, guys. Good night. Good, good night. night. So the next, and this is a this is a case that managed to piss me off because this is a series that I actually liked. Uh oh. The skate trademark has been abandoned. Oh god! Oh, no. Of course. Uh, and, Actually, and, hang on. I have. I have an update. A diff. Apparently, a different skate trademark was fu- was filed. So I get. So apparent. Apparently, apparently they still have the trademark, but I get the feeling it's a case of they're just squatting on it. Yeah, Especially- they're basically. Do- they're basically doing the. Uh- the Duke Nukem thing, like like uh, Bitchford's doing. Yeah, especially since the since um, if there's any silver lining to this, it's the fact that Session is a spiritual successor to Skate. Mm. So that might be worth take, taking a look into. But they have made mm. no. They have made no. They have had no intention <laughs> of of doing a Skate Four. And given oh, given the cur- given the current <laughs> attitudes that they have, I don't think that they will. And nope. In all things considered, it's probably for the best that they don't. Yeah, because I know I know EA will fuck it up because EA. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But the the last bit, and I'm actually gonna I'm actually gonna be skipping the main event this week. But the last part of the unholy trinity that we have. Is the original entry into the not the unholy trinity, the unholy quartet? Yeah. Oh, and speaking of EA, apparently Need for Speed Heat came about, has come out. I did not. I completely forgot that it did, and it's still <clears throat> and the and the and the remarks are, yeah, the PS2 games are still better. 
I concur. God, I remember playing those t- the PS2 games. They were so fun. Which of course, and of course, most wanted is my personal favorite. But that's not that's not too much of a surprise. I wonder if they're going to put those on Steam soon. The older games. I don't think I don't think they are, and they're not even on Origin. The only way to re- the only means to really get it is piracy. Sail the high seas, kids. Give me my goddamn rum. Normally we do not normally we do not endorse piracy, as far as you know. But I also don't endorse making it near impossible to get the to get the game legit. Exactly. Because getting a console copy of Most Wanted is not cheap. Yep. But for our last bit, we have the bold and the bitch Thesda. Yep, <laughs> because Fallout 76 can't stop fucking up. Uh, which is why, for which is why for I had Fallout to do. 76. I had to do something I normally don't do. I had to make a Shrek meme. Jesus Christ! Back, let me see if I can dig up that meme. I mean, really, it just can't. You know. What are they, you know, Bethesda, what are you going to realize you fucked up and take the L? I mean, I understand you're, you're going, you're allowing private servers, but no, you're putting them behind a goddamn paywall. Just well, take the goddamn L. Well, that's the problem is that you're asking uh, his holy yeah, asking majesty. The fucking, yeah, I'm asking the fucking hobbit to take an L, which he won't admit to. Nope. Never will. No, because no, because all all that um all that all that hairspray went to his head, went to his brain. Yeah, it just works. It's never my fault. But so apparently, Fallout seventy Fallout fuck you first subscribers have formed an aristocracy. Right after <laughs> the, right after they were complaining about being griefed. Oh, you know, oh, oh poor baby. Look. If you paid money for Fallout first, you deserve everything you have coming to you. Pay to win. Fuck that. And hell, if I was playing Fallout 76, I would do I would do it myself. It wouldn't be the first time I did that kind of thing because when I was playing Eve online, I would bu- I would bully my I would bully mining operations. <laughs> no, just go just go in just go into a just go into a high sec mining job and just blow them in. Not high sec, but a low sec mining job, and just go in and just blow missiles at them until they explode. So basically, no mining allowed, huh? No, it's just it's just my, mining is boring, and no nobody and the only advice that that can be given about mining is don't do it. <laughs> but they have set up a. There. Invite only Reddit group called Apocalypse Aristocrats. Oh, for God's sake. So they decide to form their own little Illuminati. It's like you want people to not grief you and yet you're and yet you're going around flaunting your shit. You know, yeah, exactly. And this is why I don't get griefed. This kind of why... That's why I don't like trust people in like situations that are high tension because people get dumb. They don't mm-hmm. think about what they do. Nope. And then it just gets worse and worse and worse. Of course, of course it does. Well, they, they really are, apparently some of them are calling non-subscribers as peasants for the sake of getting under someone's skin. Oh, for I'd, God's sake! I say, I say, let them continue the civil the civil war. Maybe we can maybe we can have somebody break E's record for the largest PvP fight. Yes! I would love to see that! Sadly, I don't think it's going to happen because I don't think their servers could handle it. Yeah, it would probably, it would probably destroy the servers and, uh, and, 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 and you know the Hobbit's going to be displeased. Although, incidentally, even if you don't play EVE, some of the giant PvP fights are a sight to behold. If you could see them running at more than one frame per hour. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you need like a very fast computer for that shit. 
Yeah, dude, even, even the even, even the you, YouTube videos, like holy yeah. shit. Yeah, mm -hmm. and even if you do have a fast computer to handle this shit, uh, I wonder if I don't think the bandwidth could handle it. But then we have appar apparently there are hacking problems with nuclear winter mode, the battle royale mode oh, that nobody of asked for. <laughs> of course. <laughs> And let's see. <laughs> okay. that didn't this seem to go as planned. Mm -hmm. Was there a plan? No, there was not. Mm -mm. So we start this off with a Reddit user named SwotorFan456. At least he's got good taste in games. Mm -hmm. As he says, okay, I was placed into a lobby with a hacker on my team. They explained that Fallout 76 accounts cost one to two USD and get banned on a weekly basis. They describe their hack as being able to see all enemy nu nuclear nuclear winter players in the sky in the sky as soon as they get one kilometer away on a mini map and can kill them once they enter into this radius by teleporting them and back in a split second. The hack looks just like them shooting the sky wall endlessly. They describe the game as laughably easy to hack, even to the point where you can grief people in adventure mode with no reprisal. There are discords dedicated to buying, selling hacks, and accounts. <laughs> I have died to wow. or seen hackers Someone. in about 50% of the nuclear winter rounds as described. Then again, I always YOLO queue. Oh my god, you know, <laughs> and, and the funny thing is, they're broadcasting this, yes, we hack. The problem is, Bethesda ain't doing, it, doing shit about it. Of course, they, they, of course they ban people that, that, don't, that craft too much shit, so we... Priorities. Oh, speaking of banning, then we get to then we get to the real shit. And this was a case where I had to give Ooh. them the middle finger. So they won't ban hackers, but they will ban but they will ban bug hunters, apparently. Oh or, for God's or sakes! So Argus user Ias Marg Margatoid, nice reference there, had set up a thing called Map 76, basically an interactive an interactive strategy guide of sorts. That would that would that would map the air, that would map the area and have a bunch have a bunch of knickknacks for it. After he got banned, he closed the project and gave a and gave a reason why. So if you go to Map 76, which is right here, and he goes I'm officially shutting down all development and support for all of my Fallout 76 related tools. The reason why are listed below. One, they banned one of my accounts and won't respond to re support requests. He did, I dedicate a lot of time and resources to this game and making tools. This map is one tool of many. I am in a group of data miners that mine the game and who find and report exploits and bugs. An exploit was leaked about a month ago on an obscure forum. We discovered it, tested to make sure it was real, and reported it directly to the community managers. Our accounts that we used to verify the exploit were promptly banned. What? For helping you bug hunt the game? What are you thinking, Bethesda? Yep. Second, my request to cancel my Fallout First membership and request for a refund have gone unanswered. I tried to cancel and get a refund for my Fallout First membership, also known as Fallout Fuck You First, because it is not what was promised. From stash boxes, losing junk, private worlds not being private at all, the survival tent randomly disappearing, and none of the promised Atom Shop discounts. So far, they are ignoring my requests. Update. Oh, I finally sake. got a response. The gist of it, I spent some of the atoms so I can go fuck myself. Quote, For buying this car, we are throwing a gift. We are throwing in a gift card to our gift shop. Car is not as advertised. I need my money back. Ooh, sorry, you already spent this gift card in our gift shop. Here's the thing. $14 is nothing. It is nothing to me. And more importantly, it's nothing to them. But there are principles here. They charged money for a broken product that was not as advertised. As they would rather lose a customer who has that diehard fanboy and spent hundreds of dollars buying Adams, has purchased six accounts, has helped find and fix bugs, has created heavily used community tools, and helped build a community around this game, then give me back my $14. You didn't save $14, you dumb, greedy pieces of shit. You lost a steady revenue stream and free community tools. Then, nuclear enter only rewards. Once again, the only new free content released requires you to play Nuclear Winter to earn them. The problem is, Nuclear Winter on PC is full of hackers, as we saw earlier, 
killing yep. everyone on the map from across the map. Reports to Death <clears throat> Beth fall on deaf ears. You are required to get your ass kicked for three days straight by hackers to earn the rewards. Then hmm. bugs are out of control. Self-explanatory. Then if they quit, give, if they quit giving a shit about this game, I will too. Bravo! Whew. That is a cheers. Fucking yeah! Fucking cheers, man. Yeah. And he then put in edit oh. saying. A little bit of the bubbly. Thing. Hey guys, just wanted to give a blanket thank you to all the plats and golds, not silvers though. Just kidding, I love you all. That you've given the post. However, before any of any more of you guys feel like showering with me re with rewards, please stop and instead give some credit to Undefined Seven One Nine Six, the actual creator of Map Seventy Six, who posted yes. about it all the way back here. He's the real hero in all this, and it's a shame that Bethesda did him wrong. If you want to yeah. throw shiny Reddit medals at anyone, throw them at him. I'm just the messenger. You know what? I think this button's apt. They got tickets, you idiot! But yeah, and uh, apparently, this is another thing where I have to do a last second update, and I don't have the links because these were emails that were shared with Yong Ye. Apparently, mm -hmm. they have been treating their bug testers like shit. Of course where, they are. Where they would they would submit requests and ha they would submit um, bugs that they, that they had f that they had found, and and not just bugs, legit exploits that could break the damn game, and they and these requests go straight down the memory hole. So basically, they they might as well ask a answer with, "Hey, that wasn't a bug you found; it was a feature." And peop and and Bethesda is wondering why people don't want to touch that Dutch Fallout seventy six. Hell, even the mm -hmm. people that I know who bought Fallout seventy six want nothing to do with it. Yep, I can't say I blame them. Neither can I. But i I had thought about doing the main event, but we had derailed one too many one too many times, so I am gonna save that as a geek for next week. yeah, we were loaded up tonight mm -hmm. so. well you can't you well it, it it is nutrition and you can't spell nutrition without nut yep Fair no nut <laughs> <laughs> but that is gonna that is gonna do it for this week. I want I want to thank everybody who who stopped by even even for a even for a little bit. I this is this, unironically is my favorite thing of is my favorite thing of the week. Oh, by the way, folks, uh, what the fuck? Hold on a second. Let me let me see if I can if I can get that. What do you got? Well, there was there was something on. There was something something I saw on Twitter just a second ago, but of course they say, "Sorry, that page doesn't exist." It features some it features some chick with with a with with, a, with wine in her hand, right? Mm -hmm. And those boobs were bouncing like a motherfucker. <laughs> God damn it, Aaron. But in, anyway, as far as as far as what's coming down the the rest of this week. On to, um, tomorrow, Monastery Gaming will return, and given what I might be running, I'm pretty sure I'm going to hear Misanthropic screaming in the distance. Uh oh! You play? Are you playing? Uh, Earth? Are you playing Earth Defense? No. I'm play. I'm playing. A, I'm playing a little. I'm playing a little classic. You'll know. You'll know it when. You'll know it when you. You'll know it when you see it. At least, I, at least I hope you will if you've got good taste. <laughs> also, unless unless I get some giant fucking curveball thrown at me in the next 48 hours, NorCal Mythos will be gracing the hallowed halls of this temple. We will finally nice. do the interview that we had done that we had done two months ago and I, and OBS fucked up. Thanks, <laughs> since things are starting to reach a level of sanity. With his game Carbine Jungle. Wednesday, 
Zeitgeist continues as we go as we as we go in as we go further into the Axis Island Fortress to see if we can figure out what the hell is the reason why the Duchess of Shale decided to betray the country. Mm -hmm. And hopefully, hopefully, if we can get hopefully, if you guys don't fuck up, actually stop a fifth Eurasol war because nobody wants that. Nope. Um. So, and of course, set Saturday night, well, Saturday afternoon, technically, we will have another iteration of game of Gaming Monk review. This time, tackling Degenesis. Xanatrix asked me to cover something horror related. This I decided to go with this one, even though it's post post apocalypse. And this is considerate my penance for the fact that I did not cover anything spooky or spoopy for the month of October. Instead I talked about TS anyway? instead I talked about old TSR games. And of course, last but certainly not least, Sunday. Monastery Live returns. We'll have a whole new set of geeks and a whole new people to laugh at who fucked up, and possibly some and possibly some decent looking games to to try and promote in our own way. Mm -hmm. But I want I want to thank everybody for coming in. Like I said, unironically, this is my favorite. This is my favorite thing to do in the week. It is it is always a tr it is always a treat and it's always a blast even when we get completely off the fucking rails. <laughs> but on behalf of the good brothers present and not present, my name is Mildra. I am your gaming monk. Stay fucking frosty, everybody, and fuck the Watsy. <laughs>